And that's why you don't worry about, <laughs> you don't worry about cold fronts in the fishing after a cold front. That's a pretty nice fish right there. Oh, a giant's not as big as that fish I just lost. I've got a hard situation out here today. That's just all I can say. <laughs> it is, uh, the wind is blowing hard. The good thing, the bad thing is the wind's blowing hard. The good thing is it's blowing out of the south. The other bad thing is it was super cold this morning. That's a good way to start right there, though, sports fans. I lost one that was three times this size. I'm talking three times that size a minute ago. I'm on a big, deep, smoothie crankbait. Look at that right there. But let me tell you, oh, boy, that's some cold sugar right there. Let me tell you, it was 28 degrees this morning. I'm trying to get up in the tail ends of some of these pockets where I got a little bit warmer water. You're not going to believe this water temperature. This water temperature has dropped 20 degrees in two weeks. 20 degrees in two weeks. It is 52 degrees. That's grass. 52 degrees and it was well it's actually was about 74 or 75 a couple weeks ago but we've had two nights in a row not one but two nights in a row below 30 degrees 27 degrees and 28 degrees two nights in a row and it's really really hammering the water temperature and uh, we've had north winds blowing we've had rain we've had sleet we hadn't had any snow but uh, they have had snow not too awful far from here, as a matter of fact. And it really makes it a difficult situation to figure out the fish. And I'll tell you what I'm doing here if I can have some success. But uh, I've had two bites today. That's all I've had. I had them both in similar type spots. But they were different type spots. One was out on the end of a long grassy point, way out on the end of it where it fell off into 20 foot of water, which is really what I've been trying to concentrate on. But I've found three or four of those spots and I've caught zero off of them. That's a fish. <laughs> it's a fish. Thought it's grass. <laughs> Jimmy, no wonder you're not catching any. You can't tell the difference between fish and grass, you idiot. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, that's a good fish. Is that a crappie? No, it's a bass. It's hooked underneath. Oh, he's hooked underneath the mouth. That's the reason I couldn't tell it's a fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Get in this boat. Good gosh, Jimmy. You can't fish as I've had a tour of your boat. <laughs> I've had a tour of your boat. Look at that fish. Boy, is that a healthy fish or what? Look at that fish, will you? Now that's what I call a healthy bass. This guy's been working out down at the gold gym or something. Look at that, man. We've got to have needle nose. Lucky strike ought to give you needle nose with everyone. Look at that fish. Is that a healthy bass or what? Look at that girl. That is a big one. My goodness. Boy, their lips are cold in this 52 degree weather. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes. Boy, that, I'm going to tell you, they're hitting so light. I, I didn't know if it was fish or grass. Even after I set the hook, I didn't know if it was fish or grass. I couldn't tell. There's a fish. Ah, you get one on there and you're not sure you even got one. That fish was up relatively shallow. That's a pretty nice fish too, by golly. Yeah. Dang right, that's a nice fish. That's a big fish. <laughs> that's a big fish. That's not just a nice fish, that's a big fish. Ooh, looky there. Looky there. Still not as big as that one that got off. That first one that got away. Oh, looky there. Man, that's a big fish. Looky there. Looky there. Golly. That's a big fish right there. Oh, he's got that one little treble. These hooks are so good on these deep smoothies. I'll talk about this bait here in just a second. I'll get that fish off there. The bait's made. Look at that fish. Look at that. Wow. Whoa! Wow, that's a big fish. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't care if you got cold sugar, buddy. 
You're a big one. Mm. That bait is made in Fort Smith, Arkansas, an American original deep smoothie. Oh, right back to that deep water. Inexpensive crankbait, but it's a quality crankbait. It's got my famous red eyes that I put in all the baits I design. It's got red eyes. This is the big one. This is a 5 8 ounce. And uh, it's got incredible hooks on it. Great split rings. It's a good quality bait. You can see all the paint. I've caught a lot of fish on this very bait right here. And uh, I use a small one a lot. An American Original Deep Smoothie. Absolutely the best crate make made. You know, I've drifted into the bank. Okay. You know, I've drifted into the bank here a little bit. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to sit here. This wind blew me in here. I'm going to sit here and just make a few casts right here. One of the things about fishing later in the year, it hadn't really happened to any great extent, but these fish will gang up in certain places. So you find a place like the end of a point that goes way, way out or a bend in a creek channel or something. The fish gang up in the wintertime, and they're not ganged up yet, but they're, they're in the process of doing that. So if you'll notice everywhere I've got a bite and got a fish on, I've, I've spent a I spent a lot more time there uh, trying to trying to catch another one. I haven't caught two fish in one spot yet at any one spot, but it's it's still a good thing to do. As you get later into the winter, that'll be the very thing to do. And you get into the very deep winter, there'll be exact spots where there are a lot of fish located, and uh, you know you're looking for those for those exact spots. One of the things that caused wintertime fishing to be so hard in a lot of places is those fish are in those exact spots. And there might be 50 or 100 fish in one little small area, but that means all the other areas around close don't have any fish in them. And we spend a lot of time fishing those areas where there are no fish at all. And uh, we actually need fish spread out a little bit to be able to, to catch them good when we're bass fishing most of the time, unless you can find those little sweet spots. And sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't. And that's why so often you go in the wintertime and you just zero, you don't catch any at all. There's one, a good one. Oh yeah, it's a good one. One of the things that you've got to do when that water cools down like it has, you're fishing behind these cold fronts. Oh yeah, God, dogs. That might be the smallest one I've caught. I thought he was the biggest one I've had. Dang, dang. I think he, my big one must have got off and that one got on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that fish, but one of the things on these crankbaits that you got to do when this water cools down like it has and gets cold into the winter time is you got to get pretty deliberate with that crankbait. Don't just throw that baby out there and wind it in. And most of us use high-speed reels nowadays. I'm ashamed of that fish because I said, oh, there's a big one, there's a big one. Mm. I laugh at people when they do that, but I swear. And I don't think he had any brush or grass or anything on him. I swear I thought that was a giant fish. God, dogs. Dang, Jimmy. There's one. There he is. That's a nice fish. Good fish. Way out on that point. I mean, way out on that point. I'm talking way out on that point. Oh, that's a lot of fish to lift in right there. Sports fans, that's a lot of fish to lift in right there. Woohoo! <coughs> Come here, baby. <coughs> the way to break fishing rods. You got that thing down in there pretty good too, don't you? Ah, goodness. He's got one hook is all he's got. I don't want to get in the I don't want to get in the gill plate there. Stick him with that. Get it out of there. <laughs> The, fit, the hook kept grabbing him. The hook kept grabbing him as I was trying to turn him loose. That's a good fish right there. Yeah, that's a good one. Boy, I want you to look how far out here we are. I mean, that wind is brutal. We're way out here off that point. Actually, I thought it that duck. <laughs> Don't let fishing after cold fronts scare you. Um, without a doubt, it's difficult after a cold front, but uh, if you can get a cold front that comes through, and it's it's like right now. I mean, we're we're not into winter yet. We're into winter water temperatures, which is kind of amazing. But 
but we're not into winter yet. But if you can get a cold front, and we got bright bluebird skies all day today, it's not been easy. It's been hard, but uh, but you get out and and you got a big drop in the water temperature, and and you just get out there and, and you think, man, it's going to be a tough day. Well, it is, but have a positive attitude. Have an attitude that you can catch them. And let, let me tell you, try to look for areas that are offshore where you have shallow water and if you got structure if you got a lake it's got grass in it or it's got a lot of wood or a lot of rocks in it try to find some of those places where you've got good structure that falls off into deep water now points are the most natural thing to do and you can take a crankbait and cover a lot of water with it use a crankbait that'll get down fairly deep uh, but now the fish are generally not going to be all that deep they're not going to be way down there but find you a crankbait and, and just think about the fact that you need to run that crankbait a lot slower, you need to be more deliberate, you need to be more meticulous with it, make long throws. I like to use about 12 or 15 pound test line during this type of situation. But uh, get that bait down there and just kind of work it through those areas. That was a fish right there. I missed him. Come back and got it, come back and got it. That's a fish right there. Come back and got it. And that's the way you do it. <laughs> Woo, I love it. <laughs> <sighs> and that's why you don't worry about <laughs> you don't worry about cold fronts into fishing after a cold front that's it <laughs> oh can you believe that he missed that bait and come back guys <laughs>